particle kind of matrix and under this subheading i will be talking about the motion graphs i'll be talking about the motion graph should you have a let's take for example you have a graph this way then you have something like this now remember at the graph this is the y axis and of course this is the s axis you know the way we normally used to do it on this channel i start with introduction this is the part one of the video this topic is voluminous endeavor to follow me throughout this video now there is one thing i want to draw and it's bump when we are talking about slope under motion graph and the subheading uh, under the topic um, particle kinematics when i talk about slope i'm talking about division it means that slope involves division when i'm talking about the area under the graph it involves multiplication and that's why i wrote it like this now what am i saying from coordinates uh, geometry if you're very good in mathematics you will know that we used to um we used to represent slope as m from this equation y is equal to mx plus b y m is the slope now remember i said slope involves division and so if i want to get um the slope of this it have to be y all over x it have to be changing y all over changing x please whenever i write something like this we call it change but you can also call it delta and whenever you see this symbol it means we have to for example changing y what it means is y2 minus y1 and changing s is x2 minus x1 so remember i said slope involved division and if this is the graph and i want to take the slope so it is y all over x please i'm coming down to explain this the main thing i'm going to go in if you do not understand this small thing it will give you a very huge amount of problem now and i said again that what this means is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 remember i said area involves multiplication and so if this is remember area is length times width right so from here to here this place is the length of the this is the length of the graph why this place from here to here is the width right and so like i said area involves multiplication and so if this from here to here i can call it changing y times the width which is changing x are you saying it good now throughout the course of this video and we are going to talking about constant acceleration constant velocity and the rest of stuff this is introduction please endeavor to follow me now at the board you have the the position the velocity and the acceleration so i want to talk about each one of them every one of these um, graphs so under position graph you have a graph like this now call let me draw it like this and then here is x here is t under velocity you have something like this so here is v here is t you have a graph this way and then under acceleration this is a this is t and you have a graph like this now remember i just told you that slope um involved division and then that after the slope in, involved division that the area involves multiplication and so from here if i want to get the slope pay attention this is very important and that's why i'm videoing it it may be boring but i'm, I'm going to release bomb here right now examination points 
So if the slope involves division, it means that slope from here, from this graph right now, is going to have to be x all over t. So, of course, it's going to have to be change in x all over change in t. Right? Good. And so, I've, I've already explained what is change in x all over change in t. Now, remember, from the position graph, of course, this is, this is the position. So this is distance all over time. Please remember that whenever there is distance all over time, what it means is velocity. Distance all over time is what? Velocity. Note it very well. And so it means that the slope of a position time graph, the slope of a position time graph is the velocity. That is an examination question. The slope of a position time graph is the velocity. What about the area? Remember I told you that area involves multiplication. And so what it means is that you have to multiply. So what it means here is that it has to be uh, S times T. So it has to be X times T. Alright? So if it has to be S times T, the... the the area of a position times graph tells us nothing, actually. Remember, the slope tells us about the velocity, but the area tells us nothing. Why? Because the area is just meter times second, and we don't actually have, it doesn't define anything that is meter times second. So actually, the area of a position time graph is actually telling us about nothing. Now, let's progress Remember, like I said, this is change, so this is distance all over time, which is velocity. And that's how I got that. The slope of a position time graph is the velocity. Coming to this place under velocity, remember the slope involved division, right? And so this is uh, changing V all over changing T. And remember, changing V all over changing T. Note this, that the SI unit of velocity is meter per second and the, the SI unit of time is second. If you inverse this, you will get meter per second square. And so what it means is changing velocity all over time, we're talking about acceleration. So what it means is that the slope, that the slope of the velocity time graph is what? The acceleration. The acceleration. And so the, what the slope is telling us about is the acceleration. Now, what about the area? Remember, area involves multiplication. So it's going to be V times T. Right? It's going to be V times T. And now, recall very well that from normal physics, velocity is distance all over time from this place. Right? And so if you cross multiply, let's cross multiply. If you cross multiply, what you will get is distance is equal to velocity times time. Are you seeing it? And so if the area is talking about V times T, and remember the SI unit here. The SI unit here is meter per second times second. So this will cancel this. So we are left with the SI unit of what? In meters. And so that means the area is talking about the area of a velocity time graph will give you the displacement. Displacement. Because it's measured in meters. So from V times T, what you will get is displacement. So remember, the slope is acceleration. The area of a velocity time graph gives you displacement. Let's continue. Now, under the acceleration time graph, remember, it is still, this is more kind of advanced. But for the purpose of you never can tell. Know it. Now, under acceleration time graph, the same thing we are doing, the slope involves multiple um, division. And so you have change in A all over change in, change in T. Now, change in A all over change in T. Now, in examination, they may not ask you this because it's not in the textbook on this level, but know it. The slope of an acceleration time graph will give you what we call the 
because remember, of course, this place is meter per second square all over seconds, right? So this will give you meter per second cube. And so the, the slope of a, an acceleration time graph is called the jack. Another name it is called is the jolt. Or the jack or the jolt. So know it very well. This is our time. And of course, what is the area telling us? The area, of course, is A times T. So the area involves multiplication. So this is a times t and of course remember that velocity is acceleration all over time right velocity is acceleration sorry remember the acceleration is velocity all over time therefore v is a times t that means that the area of an acceleration times graph what is telling us about is the velocity so note that very well I'm, 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 I, I wasted time in explaining this because during examination they can ask you what the velocity time graph, the slope gives you what? You should know that the slope gives you acceleration. And what about the area? The area is the displacement. In, in the position time graph, the slope will give you the velocity and of course the area should, does not tell us anything. And of course you should know that of the acceleration time graph. Now we are going to go into another form proper. Now, under the position vector, we are not done with it yet. Let me say this graph is like this, something like this, under position vector. And then, remember a line that touches a curve at one point. A line that touches a curve at one point is called a tangent line. And so remember that the slope of a position time graph, the slope of a position time graph is the velocity, right? And so this is the m tangent. So the slope that touches this curve at one point, the point that touches this curve at one point is called the tangent, right? And then what I want to tell you is that this point at which we have this, uh, the, the tangent, the slope tangent is called the instantaneous velocity. This is what we are going to be using for calculation. Now, from this curve, oh, this is my curve now. Wow. I want to make it to look nice. So we said there is a line that passes that it, it touches it there, which is a tangent slope. Now, if we have one point here and one point here, and it touches from here to here, the line that passes through two points in a curve is called the secant line. It's called the secant line. And that is the slope of the secant. And these two points will give you, will give rise to what we call the average velocity. Now, under the, the course of this topic, we are going to be dealing with calculus. And I will not come here and start teaching you calculus because that is not what we are doing. Go to my channel, scroll down, look at the playlist. You will see a video on basic introduction to calculus in the less in the next five minutes you should be able to learn calculus very fast for you to come back and start solving calculations here so please endeavor to check it on the channel and i also drop the link at the description in this video now let's continue so we, we, we already know about the instantaneous velocity the average velocity put that point very well let's continue <laughs> 